Hi, welcome to Believers Global TV. On this channel, we create Christian content that will help you in spiritual growth, bringing from powerful Word of God, powerful prayer sessions, night videos, and many more. First, the Bible says our faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So it is what you hear that beauty of it is what you hear that you engage that truly profit you. So I encourage you as about to listen to this word of God. Please open up your heart because God is about to visit you. God is about to transform your life. God is about to turn your life around. So I encourage you if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please do subscribe, like and share this message with others. So in the New Testament, there is a structure and a value system by which God rates men. It's the strength to which they can intermingle with the Holy Spirit and deploy the resources of grace in advancing his kingdom. And whether you are a male or a female is not a factor. Because in this context, it is by grace that we make progress. And so God judges men. God rates men according to cadres and according to ranking. When you study the kingdom of God critically, you will discover that the least people in the kingdom are children. And you don't need to think too far to understand why. Children are consumers. And they are most disadvantaged because in the time of war, the first victim are children. In Matthew chapter 2 verse 18, he said a cry was heard. He said Rachel was weeping for her children because they are no more. They have been slaughtered. The reason you see many people cry that hey, a demon came and was pressing me on the bed is because they are children. Because demons don't go everywhere. There are places that demons themselves advise themselves not to go to. Because if they go there, things will go wrong. The reason you are oppressed is not because God is not powerful. It's because there is a level you are still functioning that God is telling you, come up here. It's always, it's boring when every time somebody comes to you and needs something. Not because you cannot give more than what he asked, but you are perturbed that this person has refused to grow. Now, in the realm of men, women, understand love better that's why even the bible talks about the love of a mother we who are men we take responsibility but when it has to do with love the intricate cases is more with the women after all they kept the child in their womb for nine months while we were sleeping and snoring so they have a deeper connection but you see even a mother if a child is 30 years old and is still coming for food the mother will say your mates are working hard go and join them not because the mother's love have waned. In fact, that love is what is provoking the mother to stir the child to become responsible. The same applies with God. If all the time we come to God, we are asking for things. A day will come, God will tell you, this thing is available. But you at this level, you are supposed to get it for yourself. So go and learn how to get it. Because I'm more interested in your growth than in your comfort. So children at the least in the realm of God. When you advance further, then you will find sons. Sons are not male. Sons are those who have become like their God through transformation and those who are led by the Spirit. So they now know the voice of the Holy Spirit and they do the will of the Father as they are led by the Holy Spirit. And then you grow further then you come to elders elders are those who have mature enough to supervise and to legislate over the affairs of god now when you become an elder then god begins to rank you again into offices and then you have prophets you have apostles you have pastors you have teachers you have evangelists now when you are in an office there is yet another level you will get to in God. It is the, the realm of a priest. Priests are the most ranking men in the kingdom of God. Not apostles, not prophets, 
not evangelists, not pastors, not teachers, but priests. And the reason is because when God designed this kingdom, he didn't design it for apostles. He didn't design it for prophets. He didn't design it for evangelists, pastors and teachers. That office became necessary because man fell and God needed a structure of training and leadership. When God originally designed his kingdom, he designed it for only priests. And so in Exodus chapter 19, from verse 4, he began to read out the blueprint of creation to Moses. He said, see how that I have taken you out of Egypt by a mighty hand. He said, therefore, if you will hearken to my voice and keep my covenant, then I will make you a kingdom of priests. So the kingdom of God is a kingdom of priests. And Peter was reiterating this truth in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. He said, ye are a royal priesthood. He said, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. God's own special people called forth to declare the excellencies of God. So every one of us that we have rights in this kingdom we have rights to the degree that we become priests every one of us that will exercise authority in this kingdom remember i told you god ranks men based on authority and relevance every one of us will wield authority in this kingdom to the degree of the efficacy of our priesthood without priesthood there can be no rulership your kingship is a function of your priesthood many are not understanding this equation that is why they keep decreeing things and it never happens this is why they keep declaring things and it never happens because the right that you have in this kingdom is a right that functions on the premise of your priesthood and so when we talk about building capacity in prayer we are actually bringing you to the foundation of reality the things that truly matter in the heart of god every time god boasts about a man go and check the scripture he is an intercessor have you seen my servant job and then you say who is this now that's the first book of the bible that was written and in the first book of the bible god was making boast of a man if you study ezekiel chapter 14 verse 14 that's when you will discover the office of job job was not a prophet job was an intercessor god said if i say i will destroy a city even if you bring these three men noah daniel and job they will only save themselves that means the stature that job had in the kingdom that made God to boast with Job is not because he can see in the spirit it's not because he was wealthy it's because Job was a priest you want to get to a point where God can boast with you then your priesthood must be restored because God boasts only with priests in Jeremiah chapter 15 from verse 1 God made a declaration and God said, even if Moses and Samuel pray on this matter, I will not answer. That means in the kingdom of God, the men that change things are the men who pray. That means if he were to change his mind, he will change his mind based on the strength of their intercession. So when you find people who pray, they are people that engages government with god there are people that advances government with god that was why in exodus 32 god said i will wipe out israel and start a new generation with you god was discussing with moses about kingdom agenda and the things that he had in mind what kind of stature is that is the stature of an intercessor He had a covenant with Abraham. But he came back to tell Moses. This covenant I have with Abraham. I want to annul it now. 
He didn't talk to the angels about it. He came to an intercessor. And quickly, Moses went back to his office and said, Far be it for you. He said, Repent, God. How can you deliver them from Egypt and destroy them in the wilderness? While a petty man is going for an impartation, hoping that they will prophesy breakthrough, an intercessor knows that breakthrough is the least problem. He is talking to God. What about Nigeria? What are you saying about Nigeria? Another one is saying, What are you saying about Africa? Meanwhile, somebody else is going to God and say, Lord, let them anoint me so that I will get married. How do you compare the person coming to receive an anointing for marriage with the person interceding for the whole Nigeria? Do you know how many unmarried women are in Nigeria? In speaking of stature in the kingdom, somebody else is telling God that he needs what to eat and drink. Another person is talking to God about the government. I'm not impressed with what is happening in the government. Lord, there must be a change. So why one person is surviving, another person is ruling? The difference is the strength of their intercession. You will leave the realm of begging. You will leave the realm of hoping that things will work. And you will come to the realm where you make things happen. There are people things happen to. There are other people things don't happen to them. They make things happen. The people who make things happen. They do it from the altar. In Luke chapter 2. From verse 36 to 38. The Bible spoke of a woman. Anna the prophetess. She was like every one of us seated here. And the Bible said. Her husband died from her youth. And he said. For 84 years. She was in the temple. Night and day. Praying and fasting. And the moment Jesus was born, the Holy Ghost had to come tell Anna that the Christ that you have been praying for have come to the earth. That means Jesus did not come to the earth just because God felt like it. Jesus came to the earth because an intercessor made a highway for him to come into the world. That's the level of power that some people wield on the face of the earth. They are men. That God himself will say to himself, Will I do a thing without telling my servant Abraham? What do you mean? Are you not the sovereign Lord? Yes, you are the sovereign Lord. But in your sovereignty again, you have declared that the heavens belong to God. But the earth belong to the sons of men. And the men who get keep the earth, they do it from the altar. So even when the sovereign Lord wants to do something on the earth, he will consort with the gatekeepers. It's the power of intercession. And if intercession and prayer is this important, that God himself will have to partner with a man to bring his agenda to pass, then every man who is wise will desire his or her altar to be alive. Because it's what gives you relevance in the realm of God. Mama was sharing vehemently when she was teaching how vain some people are. Their glory is in the things they possess that perishes. They wear a shoe and that shoe defines their value. And you ask them, where was the best shoe, best shoe you had two years ago? They don't remember where it is. They drive a car and the car determines their value. And you ask them, where was the car you drove seven years ago? They don't even know where it is anymore. Things that perish define people's value. It speaks of vanity. But when a man truly knows what counts, he comes to the quarters where people do business with Abba. And even when they leave the earth, the assignment they carried out remain an eternal memorial before God. It's the power of intercession. The priesthood of prayer and everyone must consciously and deliberately build capacity in the place of prayer thank you for staying to the end of this message but before you leave i want to tell you a story there was a father who has two sons and so he sent two of his sons to the farm like to go and harvest Yam. So he called them both 
and sent them. The elderly one says he is going to go, that he is going to like go on the errands. But the younger one says he is not going to go. And so they left the presence of the man. And behold, the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went. But the one who says he was not going to go, at a point he thought within himself and said, my father has been very responsible for me, so I will go. So he changed his mind and went. So I want to ask, among these two sons, who actually does the will of the father? It is the younger one. So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you listen, and probably you feel stirred up. But later on, the zeal, the passion that you had, when you were listening to this message dies and you do not apply this message, it means the time that you dedicated listening to this message was a waste. So it is not about what you share alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone. It is more of what you take out of those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um, better. So... I do hope and I pray that this message will transform your life, will turn your life around.